Watch the Hill at noontime. New pressure on House Republicans to bring a vote on legislation that would allow a special committee to investigate the deadly consulate attack in Benghazi, Libya. Uh, my next guest releasing what some believe to be the largest petition ever presented to Congress. Literally, a 60-foot-long scroll of veteran signatures who want this investigation to happen. Republican Congressman Steve Stockman out of Texas is a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. And, sir, welcome to our program, and good morning to you. Uh, let's morning, get to Bill. the event in a moment, but why do you think a special investigation is necessary? Well, it's been a year since uh, Benghazi happened. Uh, on my own committee, which is investigating Benghazi, we have had now two hearings canceled, and we believe it's because of witnessing tampering or intimidation. The, the uh, State Department has refused to release a lot of the witnesses from their commitments that they signed an oath of secrecy or whatever. We're asking the State Department to allow the witnesses to come forward, stop interfering with investigations. Since they refuse to do that, we're asking for a special committee that has subpoena power to open up this, uh, what's really is a sad situation, and I believe is involved with many people, and, and I think this could be explosive if it ever got to the people. Um, the, the House Speaker, John Boehner, has not gone there. And he's been asked about it repeatedly. And he says there were four different committees doing fine work already. Why is he wrong? Well, because obviously I'm one, I'm one of the members of the committee. We're, we're not getting cooperation from the State Department. We need more subpoena power. We need more focus on this issue. It's not working. If it was working, I wouldn't say anything. But quite clearly, if, if you're having witnesses that don't show up, that don't want to come, who claim that the State Department has, has forced them to sign additional security agreements. Uh, this, is a, this is a situation where we need somebody with special powers to, to issue subpoenas but and get them before. Ha, doesn't the House have subpoena power now? Not really. Apparently, we, we've tried to get them to come forward, but there's some uh, contradiction between what they've signed as, as a, uh, when they first come on. The State Department's also making them sign additional pledges. So there's a conflict of, with what they can talk to us. If we have special subpoena powers, I believe we can get to the bottom All of right. this. Can others have argued otherwise on that? But you believe this Benghazi investigation is going to lead somewhere. I mean, wh wh what is your hunch? Where does it lead? Well, you what have will so, it tell you, you? What answers will it give you? Well, we have so many of the administration trying to block the testimonies. We haven't even heard from many of the, the survivors that were there. We haven't heard from a lot of people. And the way that they're so obstinate about this and so willingly to, to go around Congress and not let us hear the information, it just raises the level of suspicion that uh, there's something going on. That there's smoke. There was probably a lot of fire. So you think they're hiding something quite clearly? Well, clearly they're, they're working so hard to stop witnesses coming forward. The 60-foot scroll at noontime, I do believe. It's been signed by a 1,000 special ops veterans. Will this happen today, or you're getting resistance on that from Capitol Police? Well, the, the Capitol Police say that we're not allowed to do it, but we're working with them right now. We're going to un, unfurl the, the scroll, and uh, it's demanding that they, we have a special investigation. We owe it to the survivors. We also owe it to the victims that were killed there that uh, more of the story be told. This is not something we should hide from the American public. Right. Have you contacted the Speaker's office and told him about your intentions, and if so, <laughs> oh, yeah, what do they we issued, Well, he hasn't said anything to me personally, but we're, I'm, I'm letting him know that uh, I, I respect the Speaker, I respect uh, Pete Sessions, my fellow Texas Congressman, and this is uh, something that hasn't really been done since 1934, releasing a, a petition against the rule of the House. So. Uh, we we're, we're, don't know where it's going to lead to, but we hope it leads to finding the truth and getting to the bottom of, of and you, this And you think situation. this is the kind of attention it needs? 1934, you say? That was the last time? That was the last time, uh, according to the parliamentarian, that a discharge petition was done against the rule uh, in the House. So we're doing something a little bit novel, but uh, I think it's uh, unprecedented, but it's, it's needed. Well, one of the military leaders, as you know now, will be interviewed. Um, this was a man who was thought to be in retirement. Um, or near retirement, and he was, um, some would argue, blocked from an investigation. He will now speak. Will that give you answers you need? I hope so, but I also want to hear from some of the survivors that are not being allowed to speak, and also some of the people that have apparently signed sworn statements of uh, silence. Uh, I call upon the State Department to release them from those commitments. All right, sir, we'll see where that goes. Thank you for your time. Steve Thank Stockman, you. noontime. A 60-foot scroll. We'll see how it goes, sir. Thank you for your time from Thank Capitol you. Hill. All right. 7